In the previous video, I explained the notation RMN to be the number of self-avoiding walks. Turns out that this is not the most famous use of this notation. It is much more commonly used to denote Ramsey numbers, which we will explore in this video. Although it is a rhapsody, I still want to structure it a bit. This journey will not be an easy one, particularly towards the end, but it is a very rewarding one. Let's start with the first chapter of this journey. If we assume friendship is mutual, which means if A is friends with B, then B is also friends with A, then it is a well-known fact that among any six people on the planet, you can always find a group of three people who are friends with each other or not friends with each other. To analyze this and ultimately proving this fact, we first reduce each person here to a vertex of a graph, and we connect people using a red edge if they are not friends with each other, and a green edge if they are friends with each other. Then the fact is the same as saying that there is either a red triangle, meaning that these three people are not friends with each other, or a green triangle, meaning that these three people are friends with each other. Since any two people are either friends or not friends, all the vertices are connected by edges, but we just don't know the color of the edges. With this setup, we can now present the proof for the fact. We only focus on one particular vertex and all the five edges connected to that vertex. Among these five edges, since there are only two colors, one color must appear at least three times. Here, we choose the red color. The argument would be the same if the colors are reversed. Now consider the connections between these three vertices. If any of the connections is red, then we must form a red triangle. If not, then all the connections here are green and we form a green triangle. So, a triangle is inevitable in all cases. So this is the well-known fact and its classic proof. We move on to a less well-known proof of the same fact. We start with these kinds of shapes, where the arms are edges of different colors. Around a vertex, there can be no such V-shapes when all the edges connected to it are of the same color, or precisely four V-shapes when there is an odd edge of different color to the others, or precisely six V-shapes when the edges are in a 2-3 configuration of colors. We can conclude that no matter which case you are in, the number of V-shapes around any vertex is at most six. And since there are six vertices, the total number of V-shapes is at most 36. Now in a triangle, it can either have an odd edge of different color, in which case there are two V shapes in a triangle, or all the edges in a triangle are of the same color, in which case there is no V shapes in a triangle. So the types of triangles are those with two V shapes, or those with zero V shapes. Now that we have proved that there are at most 36 V-shapes in the whole graph, there are at most 18 triangles with two V-shapes. However, the total number of triangles in the 6-vertex graph is 6 choose 3 because we can freely choose the 3 vertices to form a triangle, and this is equal to 20. So altogether, we showed that there are actually at least two triangles with zero V-shapes, or the red or green triangle that we want. The fact only requires us to show at least one of the type with zero V-shapes, but now this proof tells us that we can say something stronger. There are at least two triangles of this type. Since we have proved more than we want, it is natural to ask whether five vertices still work, which brings us to the definition of the Ramsey numbers. For the previous case, five does not work, because there is quite a nice counterexample. This five-vertex graph does not contain any red or green triangle. 
We usually denote this fact as R33 equals 6, but what does the R thing mean? Rmn is the minimum number of vertices of a graph that guarantees there are m vertices which are all joined by red edges, or n vertices which are all joined by green edges. In mathematics, after you define anything, you should ask yourself whether this is well defined. The problematic bit is that we defined Rmn to be the minimum number of something. But it is possible that we can never guarantee any of the two things below, no matter how large the graph is. But it is indeed well defined, and this is a special case of Ramsey's theorem. It takes a theorem to justify the well definedness of something. The proof of it is not difficult, and I will put it in a separate video. But we will use this central idea of the proof for the next section of this video. So now, after defining the Ramsey numbers, the most exciting bit is R44, and the proof is a very nice and sneaky argument. First of all, let's borrow this inequality for a second to have a grasp on the size of R44. By substituting m and n to be 4, we have an upper bound of this sum of r of something. By applying the same inequality one more time, we get this. Now we know that r33 is 6. In fact, we proved it right in the beginning of this video. From the separate video, I detailed the reasons why both r24 and r42 equals to 4. So R44 has an upper bound of 23. But that does not tell us what R44 is exactly. We just know that it is smaller than or equal to 23. If we really want to hunt for the exact value of R44, what we might do is to ask the computer to check all the 22 vertex graphs. There are altogether 231 edges in a 22 vertex graph, and each edge can be colored red or green. So there are altogether 2 to the power of 231 configurations. This is a huge number. Even if we assume that a supercomputer can check 1 quintillion graphs a second, it needs 10 to the power 44 years to check all the 22 vertex graphs. Although, it turns out that R44 is actually 18, please bear in mind that it is nearly impossible to brute force this answer without clever proofs like the following. To prove that, we first consider a graph with 18 vertices. And similarly, we consider a particular vertex and its connections with other vertices. Now, there are 17 edges connected to this vertex, and there are only two colors available. So one color must appear at least nine times. Assume that color is red. Since we want to guarantee that there is either four vertices connected in red or four vertices connected in green, this amounts to proving that we can guarantee three vertices connected in red or four vertices connected in green in these nine vertices. So we reduce to a slightly simpler problem of nine vertices where we want to prove that it guarantees that there are three vertices connected in red or four vertices connected in green. Again, we consider eight edges around a single point. Among these eight edges, there can be different cases of the red-green distribution. In the case where there are more than six green edges, among these six vertices, we have proved that there must be a red or green triangle here. If the triangle is red, then we have three vertices connected in red. And if the triangle is green, then together with the initial vertex, there are altogether four vertices all connected in green. So in this case, we are done. In another case where there are four or more red edges and four or less green edges, then among these four vertices there is either a red edge or not. 
If there is a red edge, then there is a red triangle. So there is a group of three vertices all connected in red. If not, then all the connections are green. And so there are four vertices all connected in green. So in this case, we are also done. What remains is this annoying case where there are exactly three red edges and five green edges. You can do some brute force, but here is the most sneaky trick. Think about what happens if all the vertices among the nine we are considering are in this case. Is it even possible? Take a look at the number of green edges if all the vertices have five green edges coming from it. The total number of green edges can be counted to be 9 times 5 as there are altogether 9 vertices, each having 5 green edges emanating from it. But every single edge connects 2 vertices, so each edge should be counted exactly twice in this process. But this is not an integer and that does not make any kind of sense. So it is indeed impossible to have all vertices of this case. So when we unfortunately chose a particular vertex of this case, just pick another vertex not of this case. And all the other cases have been taken care of. So we are safe. This is a really sneaky trick and it might take a moment to appreciate this. But we are not done yet. Asserting that our 4 4 equals 18 also means that a 17 vertex graph does not guarantee 4 vertices all connected in red or green. Again, it is nearly impossible that it is done by brute force because there are altogether more than 10 to the power of 40 configurations to check. And even with a quintillion computations per second, we need more than the age of the universe to check them all. So, there must be a slick trick to construct a counterexample, which we will discuss in another separate video. It is a natural question to ask about R55 or even R66. The answer is, we don't know. And it is possibly best famously summarized by Paul Erdosh. Here, we slightly modify the wordings. Suppose aliens invade the Earth and threaten to obliterate it in a year's time unless human beings can find R55. We could marshal the world's best minds and fastest computers and within a year we could probably calculate the value. If the aliens demanded R66 however, we would have no choice but to launch a preemptive attack. This just illustrates how difficult it is to calculate R55 and R66. This problem is simple to state, but it is extremely difficult to solve as you have seen in the Erdosh quote where we should just give up on R66. This kind of simple to state but difficult to solve problems are prevalent in mathematics, not just the Ramsey numbers. Another famous example is Fermat's last theorem, but I think that is kind of the attraction of mathematics. A deceptively simple problem can often yield rich theories in mathematics. I will release the videos for the proof of Ramsey's theorem and R44 not equal to 17 in a few weeks. Stay tuned by subscribing to the channel with notifications on. Don't forget to click the like button if you enjoyed it. See you next time. Bye.